Next, I guess we have the 2019 Comprehensive Annual Financial Report and Audit and Deputy Finance Manager, Ashley Wrench. All right. Good evening, everyone. Um, tonight, I'll uh, be providing a presentation on um, the 2019 City of Brookings Comprehensive Annual Financial Report and the Financial Statement Audit. In this presentation, I'll discuss the um, purpose and elements of the Comprehensive Annual Financial Report and also provide um, a high-level overview of the 2019 financial statement. Um, I'll also provide some highlights of the general fund in particular, as this um, statement, or as this uh, fund is the uh, one that supports our day-to-day -day operations, including administration, as well as public safety, public works, and parks and rec, among others. And I'll also um, go over the 2019 financial statement uh, audit and results and let you know where you can access this report if you'd like to take a closer look. And the Comprehensive Annual Financial Report, or CAFR, is a set of governmental um, financial statements uh, that are prepared um, in accordance with um, the standards set forth by the Governmental Accounting Standards Board. And they include both government-wide financial statements, which focus on the overall organization, as well as fund financial statements, which uh, break the information down into smaller groups of related accounts. Um, it's an annual snapshot of the city's financial position at the same time each year. And this, um, the, these statements focus on um, the city of Brookings, um, Brookings Municipal Utilities and the Brookings Health System combined. Uh, these statements are used internally for decision-making purposes and um, budgeting. And the South Dakota Department of Legislative Audit also uses these statements and, com and compiles them into um, a database for use by legislators and other municipalities for um, decision-making and comparability purposes as well. And financial institutions, uh, grantors, and credit rating agencies also use this information um, to determine credit risk. A current example of this would be um, the risk assessment that was required to access our um, state allocation of COVID recovery funds. Um, the assessment required the city to disclose information regarding our most recent audited financial statements and um, the results of the risk assessment determine how quickly we'll be reimbursed for those expenses. The CAFR contains four main sections. The introductory section includes a letter from city leadership as well as a listing of the city officials and um, the organizational chart. The financial section is the largest component and that contains the financial statements, the um, notes to the financial statements and the required supplementary information. And then um, the statistical section contains historical financial data for about the past 10 years as well as um, additional information on property and sales taxes. And the final section is the audit report, which contains the audit um, findings and results. The city reported 26 governmental funds in 2019, and that includes our general fund, as well as our special revenue, debt service, and capital projects funds. We have 12 proprietary funds, and that includes our municipal utilities and the health system, as well as the liquor store and landfill. And um, also included in proprietary funds is our uh, medical self-insurance internal service fund. The city also has um, two fiduciary funds um, that are held for um, entities outside the city government. And this includes um, a fund for flex benefits for employees and then um, an account for the Rural Fire Association. The first statement I'll discuss is the statement of net position. This statement is similar to the balance sheet of a private entity and it reports all of the financial and capital resources for the city. You can think of net position as um, the city's net worth, and the city's total ending net position of $389 million reflects an increase of about $24 million over the calendar year. It's important to understand that not only does this $389 million represent the combined net position of the city, BMU, and the hospital, but a large portion of it also um, represents non-liquid assets, such as capital assets and restricted funds and investments. As you can see in the pie chart, um, about 58% or $20, $224 million of our net position represents investments in capital assets. About 2% or $9 million is restric restricted 
um, which means that um, those funds are, um, have external restrictions placed on them for how they can be used. And then um, the remaining 40% or $156 million is considered unrestricted. These unrestricted funds can be used um, by the city to meet obligations to residents and creditors, and they may be subject to um, internal designations and limitations as well. Um, the graph on this slide shows the city's net position in um, over the past 10 years, and uh, this information can be found in the statistical section of the report. The blue bars represent the governmental activities and the yellow bars represent um, business type activities or essentially the governmental funds versus the proprietary funds. Governmental activities net position has increased approximately 64% um, over the past uh, 10 years from $68 million to $110 million and business type activities net position has increased almost 99% over that same period from about $140 million to $278 million. Overall net position is up $182 million or 88% over the past 10 years. Um, considering that our net position has increased by an average of almost 10% per year over the past 10 years, um, this means the city has consistently made efforts to improve and increase um, the value of our infrastructure and equipment. And this translates to an increased quality of services offered to our residents. The consistent increase also indicates that um, we have uh, fiscal responsibility across the organization. Next, I'll discuss the statement of activities. This statement shows the city's change in that position over um, last year in terms of revenues and expenses similar to the private entity's income state. Um, information on this statement is similar to um, what you have heard in the budget presentations. Um, general fund revenues are primarily driven by um, property and sales tax, and pu public safety parks and streets make up the largest portion of our general fund expenditures. The four major proprietary funds that drive business type revenues and expenses are the electric, telephone, wastewater, and health system funds. Governmental activities increased by approximately $8 million over the year, and um, business type activities increased by about $16 million. The circular chart at the right shows um, how the city operations, BMU, and the Brookings Health System relate to one another in, total, in terms of total net position. As you can see, the city operations represent about 40% of net position, BMU is at 41%, and the health system as about 19%. Excluding BMU and uh, the health system, the general fund makes up about 20% of our total net position for city operations only. And this is the predominant fund um, that finances our city's basic operations. The general fund balance increased by approximately $1.4 million, um, or 8.3% over 2018. And actual expenditures were about $1.4 million under adjusted budget for the year. This is due to um, lower personnel expenses in the Parks and Police Department as a result of vacancies and also a change in the project scope at the Larson Ice Arena. Um, there was uh, maintenance uh, expenses that were budgeted for this facility and the scope was shifted to a capital project to be financed by a bond and therefore the budgeted maintenance expenses were not incurred. Uh, actual revenues were about $523,000 over adjusted budget and this is due to favorable economic activity and higher return on investment. Finally, I'll provide a quick recap of the 2019 financial statement audit. We're pleased to report that the audit results um, included no internal control deficiencies, no instances of noncompliance, and no material weaknesses for the reporting period. And the finance department submitted the final report to the Government Finance Officers Association to be considered for a nationally recognized award in financial reporting. The audit was conducted in May and June by BKD CPAs and advisors of Lincoln, Nebraska, and they issued their final opinion on June 29th. This has been a quick summary of the 155-page comprehensive annual report. 
If you'd like more detail or would like to see the report, you can um, find it online at um, our website by clicking on City Departments and City or in Finance Department and Financial Report. And please let me know if you have any questions and, or feel free to contact um, Eric or myself in the future if you have any questions on this report. Thank you. Any questions? Okay. Oh, City Manager. I would just comment that uh, Eric and his team, Ashley, did a phenomenal job with the audit this year. Um, it's taken a lot of work. A lot of people don't understand that it takes four, maybe five months worth of work, day in, day out, getting this stuff done and prepared. And the results are great. Uh, we're in a great financial position given the conditions of COVID and everything out there. I think that's thanks to your work, but also the city council's work and properly planning. So hats off to everyone. Yeah. And thank you for the report, Ashley.